So tonight, we are honored to have celebrated storytellers, Agape, Linda, to share their stories that really matter. They have both written books in different genres, but really eerily similar. Agape writes a memoir for life, and Linda writes a spiritual fiction. And I am amazed at how similar these books really are. Agape, and I, I'm not going to say her last name, but it's hard to pronounce, but I'll try. Agape Stasinopoulos is an actress, an inspirational speaker, and she's also the author of Unbinding the Heart. She wrote this book, and it really is a collection of 32 stories that share everything about her life with her mom and her sister, and the stories are very wise and inspiring. I just thought it would be really nice if before we start to speak and share our stories with you, if we all celebrated the love that lives in all of us. And um, it's a very simple process if you would just join me. You can close your eyes, you can open your eyes, but it's really evoking the presence of love. You can take your right hand and put it in your heart, or your left hand, whatever feels right. And you can take your other hand and put it in the belly. That's where the center of our emotions lie. And if you would like to just take a deep breath and come really present in this room, and as you exhale, just exhale any part of the day that's just getting here, the bustle and the hustle of the day. And this time, as you receive your breath, Allow yourself to receive it. I, I really do believe that everybody has a heart that longs to be shared. No matter who you are, what you do. And partly why I wrote this book is because I learned how to open up my heart and share it, meaning that agape is the Greek language for, not, for love. And as a young girl, I was always trained, you know, from Greece to really share your love. So partly is, I felt like tonight, both Linda, the other author, who is wonderful, and I told our stories to touch people's hearts. And I really feel that it happened. You know, you could feel the energy in the room. You could feel people opening up, amazing stories that they shared. And I think it's like giving permission to people to say, share who you are. Who you are is enough. What gives you your inspiration? What inspired you to write this book? You have many books, but this was most special. Well, this is my heart, and it's really, I wanted to tell my story and how I overcame what I overcame, and all the little things that happened and didn't happen in my life really led me to one major thing, which is myself. And I really feel whatever happens in our lives or doesn't happen, it's like really takes us in a spiral to find who we are because we all want to find who we are. The sleeve of your book states Greek wisdom has been instilled in your story. Tell us about how your culture has influenced you in your life and career. Well, the Greeks, you know, we have wisdom, we have kefi, we have the Greek chutzpah, as we say, we, we have the celebration of life. We have emotions and passion. And uh, my mother raised us like that, me and my sister Ariana. And then whatever we did, it was more like dare, dare to do what you need to do. And uh, that's what I find that, um, you know, you can't second guess yourself. You go after the things you love and, and you keep sharing yourself. And what happens is a miracle. Tell us a little bit about what you think is missing from the world that you can help fill in a gap. I, you know, I don't like focusing on what's missing because then if you have to keep focusing, but I want to say the world is a beautiful place if you keep allowing yourself to share what other people have to give and be authentic and true to yourself, authenticity. And that's part of, I think, what the Greek culture teaches us, be who you are. And I think there are many amazingly wonderful people in the world, and there are people who have their own journey and they don't want to share and they don't want to open up and it's okay. You know, we're not here to get everybody to open up. We're, 
We're here to find our own tribe. If you have a project you want to do, do it. If you have an idea, just a spot, and it's yours, go do it. If you have a book, write it. It doesn't matter if it'll ever get published. Write it for your friends, for your children. If you have a song, sing it. Sing it in the streets, in the hospitals. People need your gift. People need your love. Don't wait for anybody. If you are with a man and he's not marrying you and he's on the fence, leave him on the fence. <laughs> and say, sweetheart, there are another 10,000 million like you. And go find the one who loves you. And if nobody loves you like you want to be loved, love yourself. Four months ago, um, I noticed myself becoming a better person in subtle ways. I was opening the door for people. I wasn't doing that elevator shady thing where you see someone coming and you press that button and that away and like, oh, I just didn't see you coming. I'm so sorry. I didn't know how you got here. And I noticed that I was becoming a better person because I was feeling secure for the first time. And that's something that I've noticed about myself and about other people that when you feel safe, it allows you to start being kinder to other people. And one thing that I aspire to, and this is a tough act to follow, but one thing that I aspire to is even when I don't feel safe and even when I don't feel completely secure as I don't right now, but I feel like I'm vibrating a little bit, um, to be the best person I can be even when I don't feel that I am tethered to a, a buoy. I will. Um, working with Ariana and Agape is always a surprise. I came in here hoping to listen to Agape speak and hear some beautiful words of meditation and I ended up speaking in front of everyone which I didn't expect. I ended up meeting a lot of really interesting people that I hope are going to blog for us which should be wonderful. Um, and I came with so much more than I bargained for as this job has been. Have you read the book? What did the book bring into your life and what do you think is missing from our community that some of the things that Ariana and um, her, her sister Agapi are trying to bring to people. So I have had the pleasure of reading at least some of the book and I think part of it and what it has in common with Thrive is advocating for what's called the third metric which is about defining success beyond money and power. You would think the third thing would be would be sex but it's not. It's um, It is a uh, spiritual and physical well-being and that's what we're all about now. Reforming the corporate world so that people can live healthy meaningful lives. As an editor yourself, what is it? What kind of messages do you want to bring? And what do you want your viewers to take from your words? Sure. I mean, a lot of what we publish, we publish everything conscientiously. So we're thinking about doing good with what we write. We're not representing every viewpoint equally. We're representing the viewpoints that are doing good and making progress in the world. What is it that you took from this event tonight? Well, I was inspired. You know, when I walked in here, I didn't know what I was walking into, but I find the circle of people that are speaking about humanity. And all of a sudden, I don't know where I get the courage, but she gave me the courage. That's the reason I stood up and I had to say hello to everybody. I had a mother, Ariana and I had a mother who passed 14 years ago, who saw in us our potential. And she saw the seeds, she saw who we were individually and completely unique. And she watered that with every fiber of her being. She watered it by never comparing us to each other. My sister was this extraordinarily, um, not, not, not A personality, triple A personality. <laughs> she was excelling at everything. Math, algebra. I thought math and algebra should not exist in the world. <laughs> I prayed every night that my teacher would die. <laughs> as, if, as if, if my teacher died, they couldn't replace him. That's what my dream was. I hated it I, because I didn't understand it. But dance, theater, making people happy. So my mother used to say, darling, don't worry about math. We didn't bring you in this world to do math. We brought you here for the joy. So how I felt tonight was my heart opened completely. It was amazing to be in a group of people that um, I didn't know at all, but you could probably feel the energy building. You could really feel everyone's hearts opening. And it's like such a primal urge, I think, in all of us, that when we can get into a safe place, and really share some of our deepest fears, but also longings. 
and know that we're surrounded with people that care and want to hear what we have to say, wow. Like that is phenomenal. So to really bring that to me, it's like you've got to generate your own light. As you build your own light and as you open your heart more and more, then you are, you're like, you know, Con Ed to the world. But let me ask you, how many people feel one of the most beautiful things in life is to be seen and heard and known? And don't we all just crave that as little children and boys and girls? We say we want our parents to know us and to love us, and they do, but they also have their own stories and their own disappointments and their own struggles. So for me, I was very, very blessed. It was an incredible evening. I think what I'm taking away more than anything, I came expecting her to be wonderful, but what I'm walking away with is that New York City and our community is hungry for this. The work that I do is on the CEO leadership development level. It's everywhere. It's from an intern to a CEO. People are hungry and ready for change, for empowerment, for a new way of living and experiencing life. She nailed it on the head tonight. It was phenomenal. At some point, my mother said, a guy was going to go to RADA to study acting. Now, I needed a good teacher. So what do you think my mother did? I'm going to give you the, secret, the family secrets here. If you want to make something happen, you've got to ask. You've got to ask people who know people who can help you, okay? I wrote a blog on the Huffington Post. Please check it out, four magic words. Can you help me? Can everybody say that? Can you help me? You know why? Because when we ask for help, we open up the channels for love to come in, for help to come in. Let me hear it.